Recently, a new release of Stable Diffusion Automatic 11.11 was launched. In this video, I will show you some of the new updates, as well as some tips and tricks I have learned over the past year. First, check to see if you have the latest version. If you start Stable Diffusion from the web UI user.bat, you can see the version number in the command window. It says v1.6, but a new version is available. In your web UI folder, click on the address bar, type CMD, and press enter. A command window should open at the exact location you are in. Now type git, leave a space, and then type pull. This should start the update process. However, if you have edited some files, it will not update and will ask you to commit or stash them. If this happens, you can type git stash and press enter, then run the git pull command again. I did this, and now when I start Stable Diffusion, I can see that it is at version 1.7. If you go to Automatic 11.11 on GitHub, you can find more information about this interface. To find out about the latest release, look on the right side for the word releases and click on it to see all the releases. You can check what has been added, what was changed, and uh, what bugs were fixed. I will talk about uh, some of these changes in this video. Um, for those who are using SDXL models, here are some tips. You can add some command line arguments to optimize your stable diffusion depending on what GPU you have and how much VRAM you have. You add these arguments in the .bat file, uh, which you can edit with Notepad. So after the equal sign, you add your arguments. Uh, as you can see, I already have Xformers there because I have more than 12 gigabytes of VRAM, and that is what's recommended. If you have lower VRAM, check the other options you can add. I also have Theme Dark added here. This activates the dark theme on my Stable Diffusion. Now we are in the Automatic 11.11 interface with the dark theme enabled. As you can see, it has already opened with some settings that may differ from yours. You can change these settings to your liking. For example, you can choose a prompt that should appear every time or set a negative prompt, size, or any other preference. When you're ready, go to settings and scroll down to others to find the defaults. When you click on it, you'll see several buttons. Click on view changes. Here you can see the values I've added. Then click apply and the reload UI button to reload the interface. After reloading, you should see all your settings applied by default. For the next tip, let's test a prompt for a portrait of a cat. Hit generate to get your first generation. But what if you want multiple generations and don't wanna click generate each time? You can right click on the generate button and choose generate forever. This will start generating image after image until you cancel it. To cancel, you right click on the generate button and choose cancel generate forever. Now let's say you click generate and it takes too long or you already see that it's not what you want. You can interrupt the generation by clicking interrupt. This will stop the process at that step and you can see the image is unfinished. Here you also have a recycle bin icon that you can use to delete your positive and negative prompts. Additionally, the arrow icon lets you bring back a generation from a prompt or the last generation if the prompt is empty. Uh, let me show you how you can save a style. For example, if I have a prompt of a cartoon cat character in a digital painting style, I will add to the negative prompt what I don't want, like not looking like a photo, not being a 3D render, or not being ugly. After hitting generate to see if I like the result, to create a style from this, I click on the edit styles button that looks like a brush. Here, I click on copy the main UI prompt to style. Now think of a name for this style. I will name it cartoon character. For the prompt, unless you want cats in all your creations, you leave only the style elements. In this case, I will remove cat. Once you click save, the style is saved. You can close the window. Now, let's delete what we have in prompts to show how it works. Let's say I generate an image with the prompt dog. You get a random style for that dog, but now if I go to the style tab and pick the style I just created and click generate, you will see the result is in that style. 
a cartoon dog character. Let's create another style for a photo portrait that looks cinematic, maybe at golden hour. For the negative prompt, I don't want it to be a digital painting, a 3D render, a painting, ugly, and I don't want bad eyes either. After removing the cartoon style, hit generate. To save this style, we do the same steps. Copy the prompt, give it a name, though this is a bit long, it's just for testing, and remove woman from the prompt so we can make portraits of any subject. Save the style and close the window. Now let's test the style on a cute cat. Pick the style from the styles drop down and hit generate and you get a cute cat portrait at golden hour. Um, you can also have multiple styles selected at once. So now if I run with both, the first one in the list is most important. In this case, it's the portrait photo with a touch of cartoon. If I change the order with the cartoon first, then the portrait, you can see it's now a combination of cartoon that is more realistic. This way you can combine different styles to create unique new styles. Look how cool this cat looks. All these styles are saved in a file named styles.csv located in your web UI folder. It's a file with text that you can edit. If you maintain the same format, you can also add your styles here directly. Just make sure to create a copy of the file beforehand in case anything goes wrong. This precaution allows you to experiment with adding styles manually while having a backup to revert to if needed. Click on your uh, Edit Styles button again. Now, if you want to delete a style, just select it and hit the Delete button. As you can see, the style is gone and only one style is left. In this release, they say they have added support for SSD 1B Let's see what this means. On Civit AI, you can search for that text. As you can see, it has found a few models with that name. The one you want is the model with segment in the name. If you click on it, you will see more details. This is a distilled, smaller version of SDXL offering a speed up. Uh, I will download it and give it a try. You need to put this into the web UI folder, then look for models, and then for stable diffusion. It is quite big, so it will take some time to download depending on your internet speed. Once it is downloaded, you can hit refresh, and you will find it in the checkpoints list. This is a smaller SDXL model, so if you have low VRAM, it will run faster than a normal SDXL model. Before I test the new downloaded model, let's test a normal model like the Realism Engine to see how long it takes to generate. As you can see, it took around 12 seconds. Now, I will switch to the SSD 1B model and generate again to see if it's faster. It takes some time to load, so wait until it's finished. I will hit generate and let's see if it moves faster. It took 8.5 seconds. This might not seem like much, but on older PCs with lower VRAM, you can see the difference. Now, let's send this image to image to image to show you another trick. Some people have asked where the interrogate button is. Under the generate button, there is this paper clip icon that says interrogate clip. If you click on it, the first time will take longer because it will download a model, but after that, it should be quicker. This will give you a prompt based on the image you have in image to image. You can see how it's loading and when it's done, I get the prompt. It's not perfect, but it's a starting point. You can copy and paste this prompt into the text to image tab and try it. Now let's try with another model, the same prompt to see how it compares. I will choose Juggernaut version seven and after it's loading, uh, I will hit generate. Now I've got this, not sure how to call it, a thing. I first assumed it was something wrong with the juggernaut model. So I tried another one and got the same thing. Or should I call it 
missed the thing. Hmm. And I thought maybe the seed had some problems, so I tried a random one. When these strange things happen, what do you do? You restart stable diffusion by closing the command window. Now everything works okay. I encountered this type of error only when loading a different model after the SSD1B model, so there might be a bug where it keeps something in the RAM. Now for more tips on the interface, as you can see, there are various tabs at the top, yeah, and you might not need some of them because you never use them. For example, I don't use checkpoint merger and train. If you go to settings and scroll down to user interface, you'll find different options like a quick settings list where you can add more stuff to the interface. You can change the tab order or hide UI tabs. I will choose these two options. When you're ready, apply the settings and reload the UI. As you can see, those tabs are now gone. Also, what's new in this release is that you can now find things in the settings more easily by using the search function. So you can search for a word and find all those settings easily. You can change the path for saving. As you can see, I put all my images in the same folder. For me, it's easier this way, but the point is that you can set the path to your folder here and organize them how you want. Say you want to generate or test multiple prompts. For example, you can generate a portrait of a cute cat. If you want to use the same prompt but with a different animal, you can go to scripts and select the XYZ plot. For the X type, choose prompt SR, which stands for search and replace. In the X value, put the word you want to search in the prompt, in this case, cat, and then add as many other subjects or words you want to replace it with, like a dog, lion, or maybe a fish. And here, you have some extra settings. Now, when you hit generate, uh, you will get all those images. First is the cat, then the cat is replaced with a dog, then with a lion, and so on. From those settings, you can change if you want to see the legend on top. It's really good for testing uh, different prompts. If you open the folder where it's saved, you can see the individual images for each prompt. Now, what do you do if you want to generate multiple prompts, but each prompt is different? In the scripts, select prompt from file or text box. In this section, you can add all your prompts uh, with each prompt placed on a separate line. And you also have the option to import a text file containing all the prompts. So here, you can have a variety of prompts, such as one for a photo, another for uh, a painting, and another featuring a landscape, and so on. I forgot to delete the prompt before running the script. So uh, all my prompts are starting with the text I added in the text box and they're ending with the cat prompt, as you can see here. Therefore, if you want the prompts in the script to be unaffected, remember to delete the main prompt. If you go to settings and search for settings in UI, you will find some settings for text to image and some for image to image. You can enable tiling on the text to image and then apply the settings and reload the UI. You will see that tiling is now available uh, in the interface. Let me test a prompt without the tiling option active so you can see the difference before and after. Um, I will create a row seamless pattern. Uh, if I preview tiling, you can see it's not tiled. It's just a normal image. Now I will activate tiling and try again. This time, the image appears as a repeat seamless pattern, but has some watermark over it. I'll try a different seed to see if it happens again. This is the AI trying to imitate human behavior by adding signatures and watermarks. These are not real signatures. I once tried to put my name as an artist and it created a signature with my name. Now, a trick to reduce the chances of that happening is to add the following in negative signature 
watermark, text, words. Now everything looks clean. So we have a seamless pattern that tiles perfectly. Did you know you can add an icon to your stable diffusion in the web UI folder? Go to the batch file from where you start your interface and create a shortcut for it. Then give that shortcut a name. Right click and go to properties. Click on change icon. And you can choose an icon from Windows icons or browse for other icons. Once you've found one you like, select it, click OK, apply and OK again. Now you can copy this shortcut to your desktop or any other folder. And now when you double click on it, it will start the interface. Pretty cool, isn't it? Let's talk about composable diffusion. First, consider the result of a cartoon chair and a pillow. When you hit generate, you get what you expect. Now, let's use a method to allow the combination of multiple prompts by using an uppercase and. The result is a chair that is also a pillow. Let's try another prompt. So, this is the result for a cat and a dog. And when I change the word and to uppercase, this is what happens. It starts as a cat, then gradually changes a little to a dog. So it is both a cat and a dog. You can have multiple ands. Let's add a bat in the mix to see what happens. And that's how monsters are born. <laughs> Moving on to the last tip. Add more weight to a word uh, or increase attention to a word. In the prompt, um, I have a cat and a dog, and as you know, the words at the beginning of the prompt are considered more important. Now, if I select a dog with a Santa hat in the prompt and press control and then the up arrow, I can add more weight to that section of the prompt, making it more important. Use the up and down arrows to increase and decrease the values. Watch what happens with a value of 1.5 to the cat. It transforms into a dog. If I select the same text and add even more to that value, the dog will become even more important. Now, if you select the same text and press control in the down arrow a few times until nothing is left, it lets you remove that weight. Alternatively, you can delete the brackets and numbers manually. You can also decrease the importance of a word. For example, by pressing control and the down arrow a few times, I can decrease its importance. So if I make cat the less important word, the dog from the prompt will have more influence. You can find a lot of information and tips for stable diffusion on the automatic 1111 GitHub page. Here's an example of what I just talked about on how to increase and decrease importance. So on the page of stable diffusion web UI, you can click on wiki, then go down and click on features, then scroll down and have fun. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you learned something new, leave a comment. If you know a trick that can help others, also leave a comment. You can find more tutorials on my Pixaroma channel. Thank you for watching and have a great day.